Hello, in this video I will build a Java EE module system which is only based on Java EE 7 technology um, as uh, an implementation of Java EE 7 I will use Whitefly um, and the system will work in the following way, way. I will use JBoss Developer Studio then um, I have uh, web applications which are normally located in the path Whitefly Home standalone deployments I will write uh, two web applications, one which I will call uh, core.war uh, and another one which I will call addresses.war and the core.war will have uh, a core client.jar and this core client.jar will contain um, the remote interfaces and maybe also other uh, things and then addresses.war can register uh, in the registry and I can also add here so, so this year this, this will use ARM I as protocol because uh, this will use local interfaces uh, and JNDI this will use uh, just the, just pure injection so uh, behind uh, will be the, the EGP spec so so there is an annotation with lookup and with lookup you can look up these EGBs so uh, let's get started now first uh, I will just save this here and now we will build our registry. So we start with a plain uh, JBoss Developer Studio and now uh, I will create uh, the core module and what I will do is I will use a Maven project um, and uh, create this uh, yeah, next. So uh, then I will use a com.airhex which is made by Adam Bean and there is just the uh, Java EE7 um, uh, Java EE7 um, um, uh, essentials so let's call it the e.incentergy.module uh, or let, let's just call it core uh, or let's just make this so and here module and then core uh, this is okay, package is okay, and then finish. So now the system uh, will create our core package um, and let's see if everything is here what we need. So um, let's go into pom.xml. We have the dependency to the full Java E application. We have the final name core. We have the properties uh, that we will use Java 8 and that shouldn't fail on an empty uh, web XML. And uh, this should already be ready to be deployed. Let's check if we have uh, an index HTML file. So we will just uh, create one so we see something. Um, so others, HTML, so HTML, HTML file, next, uh, and then index.html, next, and then finish. So now let's here. Uh, H1 and then say hello from core and um, now we, we, we can deploy this but we want to deploy this as the root um, uh, web application so what we have to do now is we have to create a special XML file for JBoss modules so uh, unfortunately um, they, they don't have support here for, for this special file so we will just create a normal file and now call it JBoss-web so and in this jboss web file we can um, define um, the uh, context root so i just have to search for that jboss web example here we go and now here we have it that's um, yeah so here we go copy and then let's paste it here and we just want slash Okay, and now we can start our Whitefly. And what you can see is that the Whitefly starts quite fast. And there are some old modules in the Whitefly. Let me just uh, remove these. Uh, CD, 1.10, 10, standalone deployments, RM star, uh, star. So now everything is undeployed. Uh, let's restart to be sure that everything will work. Restart. Then uh, let's deploy the core. 
So just drag and drop the file here into Wi-Fi 10. Okay, now it should deploy the file. Okay, and now we can check out if our local host 8080 Hello from Kong. So now we have our core web application file. Um, what we want to do now is first we will create um, a dependency where we will put the remote interfaces. So we will just use a normal Maven, configure Maven project next. Uh, then we will not use anything else, just basic. So de.instantg.module and let's call it core. Uh, let's see how what we said here. Core dash client. Core dash client. So um, in, in, in Java EE speak, you often call this EGB client. Um, and there, there are some automatic ways to generate the files that are in here. But, but I want to do this manually. So uh, then uh, it will be more clear to everyone working with that that the uh, files are in there so let's create this one core client and now we have to pimp the pom xml a little bit so we just tell it we want to have maybe compiler source 8 so here dash properties save then right click and then update uh, project uh, and this is Maven update project. Here is update project. Okay, so here we go. Um, then we, we need uh, the, the EGB interfaces to use some annotations that we will use later. So we need this dependency as well. And you can see here that we just need one dependency. So if you compare this to, let's let's uh, say Spring Boot, in Spring Boot you will have 25 dependencies with lots of other dependencies and you won't really know uh, what they are all about. When we use Java E, it's very lightweight. We just need one dependency and this dependency doesn't even get bundled into the jar file. So uh, it's just provided, it's, it's just for, for, for compiling the file. Okay, so uh, we have all that. Um, now we have to um, define a dependency between core and core-client. So uh, here in dependencies, you can just click add and then uh, yeah, just de.instantg.module artifact array core-client. Let's see if it searches uh, or yeah. uh, 0 0.01 snapshot. Okay. So, and it will automatically um, use the, the uh, file from, from our workspace, which is quite nice because this will make sure that all the time when we change something in core client, it automatically gets copied into um, web inf lib into the core app. I will show you this to you later. Uh, so now we have these dependencies. This looks all nice. Uh, this core client module will be bundled as part of core. And now we will create a remote interface. So um, package de, uh, de dot incentive dot uh, module dot core finish. And now let's create new interface. Um, we will call it registry. Uh, and let's let's call it remote. So so these these suffixes they, they are not very nice. But currently I don't really have a better idea. Um, and so let's take a registry remote. Then we need the remote annotation from EGB. This will make sure that all the beans that include this um, remote interface uh, will be able um, uh, to to be called from from other projects. Um, so now let's define some, some um, functions. So public void, let's just call it add and uh, key.stringValue. So we'll just make a registry where we just have normal keys and value. Public void remove string key string, uh, just a string key. 
and then in the end public board uh, public uh, list and now uh, let's just uh, call it no so now we win map in actually actually we'll just return a map map string string uh, or, or just call it increase okay so now we have a remote registry uh, we just have to include the map um, now we need an implementation for this remote registry and this implementation we will create it in the in the core so uh, yeah the, the, this directly comes with uh, the the error hex um, maiden archetype but but I don't need that so uh, I won't use Jux RS. I will just use internal plain old EGBs. Um, and now let's copy this package here. Create a new package. New package. Name finish. And now let's create our registry. Class registry. Registry finish. And uh, this registry, it's a uh, singleton. So I only want to have one in the whole um, application server, and uh, it implements implements remote registry uh, registry registry remote, and now uh, it all unimplement un files, and we internally we just need a hash map string string private. Map equals hash map, and now at key value uh, I have to use put. Sorry for that. Then for remove, I just use map remove object um, key. That's it. And then here for entries, uh, I, I just return the map. Okay, so now I have, I have my remote registry. Um, I have my core client. Uh, and now I will just check if this uh, works here. Okay, so now uh, this is deployed and now what I can see here is I can see here that the EGB path and we will need this path for the addresses uh, module to work. So let's uh, create a new one, new others, uh, main project, then again uh, next and uh, Let's take again com.error hex, error hex, essentials archetype, db.incentage.module, and now archetypes addresses. Well, let's just call it, oh, let's just call it address. So only address like this. Okay, save. Module address, address, address. Okay. So, and now what we have to do is for the address uh, module, it, it will directly uh, deploy to address. Then let's check here if, if we have everything. Yeah, that's all okay. Uh, here, source main, we won't use that. Delete. Okay. And, and now what, what we will do is we will uh, write an, uh, a loader or, or let's let's call it a lifecycle. So we will just have a class called lifecycle. Lifecycle. Um, and what this class will do, let's finish. Uh, should be in address. So let's move it there. Life cycle and, and, and this is a singleton as well. Um, and it's startup 
So startup means that it will uh, uh, be initialized uh, as soon as the application gets uh, deployed. And now um, let's make a function uh, in it. And let's make function public void destroy. And now we need some uh, annotations, post construct. And here uh, at pre destroy. And now we have to um, add our registry. Uh, and we need now this here. EGB. Oh, I forgot something. And I forgot to um, specify a dependency on core client so that we can uh, use the remote interface. So let me just do that uh, here. Let's just remove this package here, by the way. Delete. Okay. And now the pom.xml and the core. Our module should have a dependency to core as well. Okay, core client, and now in the life cycle, we can have, um, yeah, we can have a registry remote, registry and in it we will do registry point uh, at, and let's call it uh, Address right now uh, address status, uh, address module status installed and now here uh, just remove. Okay. So uh, now what we, what we should do as well is in the core, we will just create a, a short, uh, small, um, uh, or we will just expose the, the uh, registry as um, in, um, as in uh, Juxa RSP at the same time. So we have to do this path, then just call it registry. And this is now just for us. So this, this might, uh, Create some problems, and because uh, this might create security problems, because with add path registry, you expose this whole registry to the outside world. But now we will need um, in uh, JoxRS application. So the file that I all the time um, that, that, that deleted uh, the whole time, I now have to uh, create uh, create it again. So I just create a class, and let's call it uh, Jux R Jux. This application browse, so I have to uh, extend the JoxRS application. Um, and as an application path, I have to um, create an application path, and I, I would just call it core. And now for the registry, I um, will add here a um, path. Entries and entries and as well at get. Okay, so now I should be able to uh, access the registry via um, HTML, uh, via, uh, via uh, normal HTTP. So let's restart, uh, or, or the core should be restart, but let's restart it again, restart. And now JaxRS should be uh, initialized as well. So uh, deploying here, we, we, we see the JuxRS application which is deployed. Okay, so now let's have a look if this can be used. So we say, uh, let's check again, JuxRS core. So here core and then registry, registry. Uh, okay, core, let's check if we have to use slashy. Then registry and then entries. Core registry entries. Okay, so it didn't find a writer for, for hash map if I ask for HTML. Um, but now let's just ask for, uh, for JSON. C 
So uh, curl dash uh, content. Oh, it should be except. Except application dash JSON. Okay, so uh, it returned just nothing, which is correct because there there is nothing. Or and you can see actually it returned an empty empty map. Okay, so now we have our addresses module and our addresses module um, accesses the registry and on uh, starting the application, it register itself. So now let's try this. Let's deploy our addresses module here. And let's see what's happening here. Okay, so now we have our address module, we have our lifecycle manager and uh, the lifecycle manager added itself uh, to the registry. So now let's see what's happening here now. Um, I have to use the other window. So now it says address mode status installed. And now if I remove it again, remove, okay. It's gone. And if I add it again, It's there again. So um, this is how you build a module system and how uh, two completely independent wars can speak to each other. So if I go to uh, show you the wars, this this are the, the war application archives and, and they are really thin. So there, there's not a lot of stuff in these. So if, if you look here, then there's lots of maiden stuff, uh, but there are no, uh, if, if, there, there's nothing like, like 10, uh, or 20 uh, dependencies delivered with the wars is it's still on one page and the communication between the wars is working and now what you and what you can do as well is for example you could uh, use um, things or you can link to things in the address uh, um, in, the, in the address package so if I, I I would just show you one example if I go here to source main uh, app and I create an index file uh, HTML file uh, index.html just say okay finish and then I'm saying your hello from addresses and then I go here to the core and I go to deployed resources web app index.html and I say here page page just a really easy link address Address, go to module address. So if I go back here and go just directly here, I can go to module addresses and I, uh, I get hello from addresses. And the cool thing is that this was all hot deployed. So you didn't have to restart your server. You only have to restart your server if you, um, if you modify the Java code. So let's do that here. Uh, let's just introduce logger. So private static uh, Final logger or not equals logger dot get name uh, logger dot get uh, get logger sorry get logger uh, and then just take life cycle dot life cycle dot const dot get name and then let's log dot info uh, and just uh, or we would just say installed and let's just do it afterwards so save continue so it just told me that uh, hot reload didn't work uh, because I introduced a new static final member it doesn't matter because if I just right click here and click restart um, then the application server will reload the module and uh, should directly uh, use the logging uh, loggings as well. And now we should be able to see here. So here it's installed. And if I remove it, remove, um, it's uh, removed. And what you can see is that, that, that the core is, is still running. And that, that, that's quite amazing. So this is a whole uh, hot reload, redeploy uh, capabilities without any OSGI, so also quite lightweight, and these uh, can communicate with each other. And what I can even do is I can remove the core, 
um, and, and the addresses will still be running. Um, but now you can see that that, uh, the, 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 that, that there are some problems that uh, some receivers are not able anymore um, to uh, to work. So actually, what what it said here that it had problems to uh, remove the registry bean uh, because somebody else was still using it. Um, and now if we uh, redeploy core again, and now if we restart address, restart, uh, we should be able again to see here uh, that it has the state uh, installed. So here, installed. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video and you learn something and uh, talk to you soon. Bye bye.